here it is halo 3 what a groundbreaking game i love this game so much it's too bad that it's only on the seventh generation of systems or wait i mean on the eighth too wait it's also on the ninth wait it's also on pc and now this thing can talk to this thing So Halo Infinite came out in December of 2021. This is almost six months ago. The Master Chief Collection came out in 2014 and Halo 3 came out all the way back in 2007. These are spanning across different console generations. Halo 3 being aimed at Xbox 360, Master Chief being aimed at Xbox One, and Halo Infinite, of course, being aimed at the Xbox Series S and X. But here we are with the new features and functionality for Halo 3. This is a game that came out almost 15 years ago. Now, this is something relatively new for the gaming industry, but Microsoft's been pretty good about doing things for accessibility. You can look at their special controller they have, or you can mix and match different like parts so that people who have a hard time with controllers can still play video games. And something I'm so happy that they're doing with the Master Chief Collection is Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST now have crossplay between the Xboxes and the PCs, which is just so nice for accessibility. You can read up on Fortnite and see all the issues that they went through trying to make sure all these different platforms can play with each other and see how much trouble Sony was giving them. They said in their statements, uh, Epic did, that Sony was the only platform holder that had extra fees associated with doing cross-platform. Now, I don't know what their status on this is at the moment, but you can look at the list of games with cross-play and clearly see that Sony is lagging behind and that Microsoft has been around doing it for a lot longer. And you know what that translates to? More people playing more games. And if you're playing games, you might be spending money on those games. And that is great for Microsoft. And a big part of what it seems like Microsoft's strategy is right now is making a big grab for market share and encouraging accessibility is a big way to do it and a big way to reach out and expand to wider audiences. If I don't want to play a game because I can't play with my friends, then obviously I'm not going to be spending any money on that game. And if I don't spend any money on my Microsoft platform, then Microsoft isn't going to be making anything. If you have where people can play on different platforms, then they'll probably also be able to pay on those platforms. Now, I love Halo, but I hadn't really felt like replaying it until recently when I was playing with someone who was on Xbox. I have the Master Chief Collection on PC, I have Game Pass, but I had to play it on my Xbox so that we could play through together. But now, if I wanted to play Halo 3 or Halo 3 ODST, then I could play that right on my 4K high refresh rate monitor and use my keyboard and mouse and I would be having a great time. Now, Halo 3 was one of the first online games that I really sank my teeth into in terms of being able to just jump into it and play campaign and then play some custom games and whatever. Like there was, I didn't have a lot of money for a lot of games. So I really just milked that. And most of my friends at the time were the same exact way. So we were able to really get things going with that one game. And the fact that I can still do that is fantastic, especially for what started out as a console exclusive. And on top of that, they've been improving the game. What you're seeing right now is a new game mode for not even Halo 3, but Halo 3 ODST. This is a firefight game mode that has you battling waves of just the flood. And let me tell you, I died a few times on here and I'm only playing on normal. Some of these guys are pretty freaky and I totally forgot about it. But they haven't just stopped there. They've been doing things. I'm not gonna go on a huge thing about what all they've been doing. The games are cool, I like them. Something that they've done is taken some of the skulls that they had for the remakes of Halo 1 and 2, the anniversary editions or whatever they're called, and they have like backported those to 3 and added, I think it's like 15 new skulls or something to the game. Something awesome like that. You still just play the hell out of campaign over and over and try the different skulls. And it's support like that that I hope can kind of push the industry into being able to make games last and give us the ability to relive our experiences and memories of the games like this is two console generations ago. And we could play them even better than ever. 
I am a massive advocate for both game preservation and accessibility. If you look at my channel, there's a ton of things just on how to restore this game or doing a mod to your console so that you can play that game or doing a translation patch so you can access this thing that everyone gave up on before. Except for these few people who brought it back into the light and now we have all these new experiences with these old games. And I think right here, there has been a good job in preservation and accessibility. And on top of that, they have a roadmap for more. They said, quote, our goal is to support modding and Steam Workshop for every game in MCC. In CU58, I have no idea what that means. We are adding support for Halo 3 ODST. During this year, our goal is to also add support for Halo Reach, Halo 2 Anniversary MP, and Halo 4, which I think is fantastic. And then on top of that, they say, in the future, we are looking to include improved mission subtitle support across all games, controller remapping, and we are exploring additional campaign accessibility options. And I think that's great. And you know what else I think is great? I think hearing from you guys is great. What are some games that you think have done a great job at keeping the game alive? What are some communities that have brought it together? And what are some games that the developer has actually kind of pushed to be able to bring new life into it. One of my favorites, I think, is Postal 2. Like, seeing a resurgence with that not a crazy long time ago. I think that's a really cool developer kind of pushing support. Thankfully, it was already on PC, so you didn't have to do a ton to be able to do stuff to it, but just, just little things like that. I love seeing new content for older games and then them, of course, updating it to where you can play it on the newest version of Windows easily is really nice. Or what are things that you would like to see? That's something I would like to know as well. I'm kind of curious. I know like colorblindness and subtitles are big things, but what are some other just really nice quality of life? Like controller remapping is a big thing for me. I think that that's really important to be able to do. But yeah, that's all I got for you. I think that this update was very cool, not literally in terms of content, but just what it means. I just love seeing little things like this. And I say that, it probably wasn't a little thing or this would have came out in 2014, but here we are. I'm happy with it and um, I'm happy to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching and until the next one, take care. Goodbye.